Some of you may be wondering why I am starting this video in the kitchen. Well, there is something that you're going to see at the end of this video that is very secret. And I do not want to spill the beans. As you can see, I am going to spill the beans now, but I really don't want to spill the beans right now. Let's think about Microsoft's Vista. At least when you're using the Flex 5000A software, you don't click on sideband and it doesn't say to you, do you really want to use sideband? Are you sure you want to use sideband? Or let's say I click on CW. It doesn't ask me if I really want to go on CW like Vista might. Or if I change a filter, it doesn't say, do you really want to be that narrow? One thing that's very impressive about the Flex 5000 is its scope display. When you look at the ICOM 756 Pro 3, it has a nice scope, and I thought it was great when I originally bought it. But when you look at the Flex, that scope display is amazing. You have a pan adapter, you have a scope, uh, you have so many different things you can look at. The 5000A tends to be like a lab instrument, a very expensive lab, lab instrument. You have two-tone testing. You have single tone testing. You have sweep testing. It's, a, it's an instrument that you think you might have to pay $30,000 for, but it's all in one package. You know, in the recent stock market debacle, I lost about $50,000. Or at least I saw my accounts diminished by that amount. So I figured, what's another $2,000 to buy a flex? Why can't I enjoy it? You know, I saw this money just disappear from my stock market account and I didn't get anything for it. So those of you that are thinking, well, times are bad and I need to conserve my money, you might want to think about, let's enjoy life a little bit. So I went out and bought the Flex 5000. Well, I haven't spilled the beans yet on the FDR feature. So we're going to take a look at some real aspects of the Flex 5000A that I haven't yet covered. So we'll be back a little bit later to talk about FDR, and then I will spill the beans. You see the mixer, in which we can select various mic inputs. This includes three unbalanced inputs, the front microphone input, the flex wire input, a line input, and a balanced line input. In the mixer, you can select whichever input you would like. You have individual gain controls, the inputs will accommodate a wide range of microphone impedances and these inputs will accommodate a wide range of external audio equipment as well. Uh, the device here labeled CPDR, which stands for Compressor Expander, is used in broadcasting to enhance the audio, not just compress it. No other radio has this capability. It's more effective than your typical AFRF processor. The DX button increases the range of the compander. When properly used, it will increase average power output by 100%, which is the same as doubling one's power. Typical settings are Compander Expressor 2 and DX5. When the DX button is lit, the compressor expander is turned off. Okay, we're going to see the compressor expander in use. Right now we're looking at our average power and it's uh, running about uh, 18 to 20 to 30 watts. If you see how it's going. Uh, I'm going to put the compressor expander in, and our power has now uh, gone up a little bit. Uh, not a whole lot, but it's gone up. Uh, average power has gone up some. But now I'm going to hit the DX button, and uh, you can see that the power has gone up considerably, so our average power is uh, now much higher, and uh, this should be able to penetrate the DX uh, quite well. You also have the ability to screen out or blank out any noise that happens to be in the shack. Now, when I stop speaking right now, you see nothing. However, I'm going to put some artificial noise from another receiver that I have in the shack, and you'll see, obviously, there'll be some noise on the signal. Okay, as you can see, there's now noise in the room. And if I were to be transmitting, let's say that was a fan noise, uh, when I stopped speaking, you would hear that in the background. But we have something on the Flex 5000A that's called the gate. And I just hit that little button. 
and go off. There's no noise when I'm not speaking. We also have the capability to do a two-tone test, so let's try that. And if uh, that doesn't suit your fancy, we have the ability to do a sweep test as well. You also do not need a rig blaster or rig expert interface because you can do it right from the flex radio by using the virtual audio cable. With the virtual audio cable enabled we now can go to our program, uh, our Mix W program and you can see we are copying uh, a station uh, that just looks like EEA probably just sent a CQ. And of course you can copy CW using MixW as well and the Flex. Although I found MixW doesn't really do a very good job copying CW. I do a better job and I'm not all that good at doing it. If uh, Ritty is your fancy, uh, we can do that as well. We just switch over to the MixW program. And now we're copying a station calling CQ some sort of a DX contest, it looks like. Well, it's now time to talk about the FDR. Not this FDR, but this is something that Flex isn't going to tell you anything about. I found it out all by myself, and I had to conduct my research in secret. It's called the Food Defined Radio. Now, I had to scour all around to find out as much information as I found out. Now, it's a ham radio. So in order to use a ham radio, we found out that the model they're working on is the Burger 1000. The heart of the Burger 1000 are the special integrated circuits that I like to call patties. Now, if you set them up properly, you can hook them up in parallel and you will get a lot more output. In the ham radio, the first thing that we need to add to it is something called the split P. Okay, the split P and ham. It's very important that we have a very good mixer uh, to mix the products together. So I have, I found out what they're using for a mixer and to kind of spice things up a little bit, kind of spice things up, I found out that not only they're going to mix the signal, but they're going to blend them as well. I was a little surprised to find out that they were not going to use the kind of chips that we've all come to love. Uh, they're going to use a special kind of chip that has a lot of potential power uh, the model number is the Chalk O Late chip. Of course, you do need a microphone, and we know that the Flex products, with the use of the equalizer, can use just about any type of microphone and make it sound good. But then we also have this type of microphone. Hello, test one, two, three, four. To power the radio, we do need some juice. You know, the radio is not going to work without any juice. So we've got plenty of juice to get the radio going. I was kind of upset to find out that we're going to use a tube. However, I was very pleased to find out that they have found out that tubes do have cathodes, grids, and, but they're going to use a special kind of plate to get a little bit more power. Now, in order to get the radio started, you do need something special to ignite it. And we have what's known as a special gas exciter. And finally, we drive the output we do need an antenna, and we do have this wideband antenna. The food defined radio does have a pan adapter. I understand they're coming out next with an amplifier called the FDA, the food defined amplifier, but we'll have to wait for another time to hear about that.